I tend to admire the leaders who are confident and positive and cheerful. And I say that because I think sometimes people end up in leadership positions and they're not comfortable in their own skin and they're always second guessing themselves and anguishing about their decisions. To me, the leader that I admire is the person who is able to make decisions to carry them forward and, and do that in a way that is positive and cheerful and inspires other people. Leaders who take all the glory and give all the blame are the ones that I think need to change their ways. Uh, too often we have situations where something goes wrong in a situation. Uh, I've been in that situation many times and when that happens I think the good leaders rise up to the occasion and they say you know this is not how we intended the situation to, to end. Uh, it's on me and we're going to fix it. Uh, the really good leaders are the ones who when something goes right share the glory with all the people who help them. Nobody gets to a goal all by themselves. I've told this story before and it almost sounds like I'm making it up, but the truth is that I came from very humble beginnings and I really didn't have a lot to inspire me or motivate me uh, as a child. I grew up in the mountains in Virginia. Uh, until I was 12 years old, I never lived in a house that had indoor plumbing. We finally moved to Tennessee when I was 12 and I was very intimidated because Bristol, Tennessee was the big city and I had come from the country. So it took me a long time. You know, I came from a family that had no college graduates, much less anybody who had ever gone to law school. So there was nothing about my beginnings that ever would have led you to believe that I would end up even at law school, much less being a federal district judge. I tried to take advantage of all the opportunities that came along. I became a joiner. Some people would say maybe a compulsive joiner. But I started in high school joining 4-H and Beta Club. In undergraduate school, I became very involved in student government. When I graduated and started practicing, uh, I began very involved in all the v various bar association activities that I could and I learned that when you serve on committees and you're willing to do the grunt work that you learn about the organization from the bottom up and then when the time comes that you might be in a position to become a leader then people respect you because they know you've paid your dues. I think the number one thing I look for is for people who actually are volunteering to do something because they see that there's a need and they think that they are the person who can help out. The last thing I want is somebody who's offering to do something because they think it's going to look good on their resume. And then I look for people who actually follow through and if they do the work that they volunteered to do, then I know you can count on them for the next job, which hopefully will have even a little more responsibility. The worst thing that people can do is to overcommit or over-volunteer and then not get the job done. Well, I try not to become complacent. I'm constantly trying to look ahead and see what are the issues that are facing the legal profession, the judiciary, that are coming down the pike. You know, I was lucky in my legal career. I got involved in the area of sexual harassment when it was basically very new on the, on the jurisprudence side. I also got involved as a mediator when it was very new in the state of Tennessee, when mediation was very new in the state of Tennessee. And so I, I just keep trying to look ahead and say, you know, what's coming down the road? How can I position myself so that 
we can deal with those challenges. The one thing I've learned over the years is that nothing remains the same, and the people who get complacent are the people who get left behind. Thank you.